So let's start here with uh, Roger Clemens. Those are some, uh, some mean eyes, huh? He means business right there. So I'm just, I'm just gonna play this through uh, one time and then we can stop it at a couple of key points and kind of talk about what we're, what we're seeing here. Right there, right there, stop. All right, so what we try to teach in Premier, something that I've tried to instill with the guys, is there has to be somewhat of a balance point to be able to generate that strength that goes down the hill. And we, we've talked about leading with the, the, uh, the hip, the cheek. And right now he's in a good flex. He's got a flex to his back leg. He's in a very athletic move. He's, uh, he's brought his lead leg across his body. You don't always have to bring it back that far, but this is his timing. This is what works for him. So as he brings that leg back, he is now in a position, you can already see what he's trying to do with the upper half. He's locked and loaded. He's got that still head. He's got the shoulder that's going to go directly right to that home plate, but he's in a power position right here. And this is where, this is where he's comfortable with his hands in the, the, the arm, the ball coming out of the glove. He is ready. This is a, a thing that's going to work for him. Now you can go ahead and get When I was a kid, Jack, um, a lot of coaches, pitching coaches, would tell me to start with my toe down. And the reason they would tell me to, to kind of pad my toe down at this point is so that I wouldn't start to tip over and lose my balance. So the, it sounds like one of the most important things here is to be really, really balanced and really dynamic. And if you can yes. be balanced with your toe kind of perpendicular to the ground or even Roger Clemens' as, as toe is pointing out, right. as long right. as we're able to maintain this balance, we're in a good place. Yes. So if you're watching your video and you see your toe up, as long as we're tall over this back leg uh, and we're, we're in a really good balanced position, then I think we're, we're all right. And there's been plenty of pictures that have a, a pointed toe. Right. It's just, it's, it's a what, what feels right for you. And if it doesn't get in the way of your stride, uh, it doesn't make contact with the dirt at an earlier state, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue on. Now, there it is. He's straightening it out. What I really like here is yeah. this back knee here, this flex yeah. of his back yeah. knee. Um, I always tell, tell our kids, right, if I'm going to jump, if I want to jump as high as I can jump, we're going to flex those knees, right? We're going to get into our yeah. legs so that we can jump as high as, as we want. The higher I want to jump, the more I want to get into that back leg. And Roger Clemens make no mistake is a power pitcher he's yes. he's, not, he's not out there finessing we'll, we'll talk about uh <laughs> pragmatics here in a minute but he's out yeah. here you know getting every ounce out of his body and i just wanted to stop here and talk about uh this this back leg here this flex in my back leg if you notice in your videos that you're not getting into this back leg right if you're not coiled into this back hip here we're, we have a, a, a leak in our boat and we're leaking velocity. The other thing I, th I think is important to note is that, like Jack said, we're leading with that front hip, right, Jack? Yes. So with a lot of us, I hear Jack say all the time, our front door is, uh, um, is opening up, it's flying open. And what that would mean is, see where his belt buckle is closed? Right. Sometimes our belt buckles will open up and our hips will swing open early. Um, and again, that will cause us to lose some direction, some velocity, uh, have us have command issue, control issues and velocity issues. So all the issues that we don't want to have, <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll happen right. right there. Well, and um, when, that lead, when that lead leg opens up too much, you're thrown with all of the body. You've lost the torque in your lower half mm -hmm. to develop you know, more strength. Uh, when you open it up, you know, we, we call it like opening up the door, just like you said. Yeah. Um, if, if it's not in line and it's too far open, you've got more to get with your fastball if you, if you get in line. Well, let's, let's take it to, to toe touch. And I think Boom. this is uh, probably the most important position uh, when it comes to direction and comes to, uh, to velocity we can see uh, that his hips have started to open. If, if, if you didn't know any better, if you just kind of locked out his lower half, 
it looks like um, you know he's about to sprint or about to run to home plate um, or throw a javelin or do something but this right here uh, belt buckle starting to open front toe starting to open but the shoulder stays closed the arm is in the high cocked position Jackie talk to me about this position right, right quick because I, I just think this is so important well absolutely it, it starts with the the, the ball uh, the swing of the ball at, you get low but now what he's he's in a position right now of strength because now what's going to happen is he brings that front side and he like what, what I talk about a lot is as he starts to bring that elbow to the hip then you'll see that arm get in that position he's in a position right now to be on top right there right there look at this look at the lead side he's pulling to the hip the glove is in a, a good position he didn't curl it early he's ready he's explosive and, and now as he's in that position, the foot where he, he had a foot strike early, a little bit closed, now it's starting to open up because the hips have opened up. And now he's in a position right now to just throw the living crap out of the ball. We, we've been talking a lot. Uh, let's, let's go back just a few clicks here. So what we're gonna see right at that, at, at that foot strike, his belt buckle is about here, but look what's going on with the, the name on his shirt. Right? It's behind his belt buckle. So you really see the separation between his lower half and his upper half. For all our workouts talking about hip mobility, hip mobility, hip mobility, this is why it's so important because our hips and our upper body need to be disconnected at this point. I mean, they're, they're connected exactly. along the kinetic chain, but they're, his hips are so mobile that they're able to open up uh, while his his shoulders and his his arm is cocked in this in this position behind him, right? For a lot of guys, the jersey on the front of my my or the name on the front of my jersey would be even with the belt buckle, and we'd lose a lot of that that coil that torque. Yes. And then the other thing we we talk about a lot, and I've been seeing in our videos, is he lands really athletic here, right? Front knee is yes. flexed, and then as we approach release. You're going to see that that front leg is going to Stiffen do, up. do what, yeah. and this is what we would call uh, what, what, what do you call those those T squats or whatever. But this is a really really important position here, getting my chest over my front side, that front leg stiffening up, and sending energy up that kinetic chain so that I can I can throw hard. And you know, with a guy like him, he's he's a power guy, so. Um, sometimes what guys will do when they have a strong backside and a strong front side like that, as they get through there, as he posts up on that lead leg and it rip, some guys will completely turn that lead side around where you're actually facing them with your right hip. And back, back in the day, old school was you always had to, after, after you threw the ball, you wanted to square up where you now become a, an infield. That was something that was constantly told a lot of pitchers, like right there. See, now he's ready to field the ball. But there are, there's going to be some, I don't know if we have it. Greg Maddox is the same way when he finishes up. But there are guys that bring that back leg around, and then they actually are facing first base yeah, because okay. they try to throw the living crap out of them. I've seen uh, Pedro is almost doing a 360 when he throws. Yeah, uh, let's exactly. uh, let's talk about a pitcher who uh, has a different style. Where where Rogers really known for his power. Um, yes. And I, honest to God, I don't know how, but we I only show five minutes left uh, before the before our video will stop. Uh, okay. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about Greg Maddox a little well, bit. Something well. you don't see a lot anymore is the full lineup. Mm -hmm. And he's over the top right now, and he's got a great sense of timing. As he starts, the leg comes up, the hand comes out. Here it goes. It's something that we talk about, his timing. Now, he's holding on to this. He's found a rhythm and a timing. And look at it. Just, it's effortless. He's not trying to throw the crap out of the ball. He's trying to pitch. He, he started off his career when he was 92, 93. And then he finished up in his career and he was 89, 90, but boy, he could just paint. He repeated his delivery over and over again and repeated his arm slot. And it's just, it's just filthy stuff. Magic. This ball moves just a little bit, huh, guys? 
Watch this. Javi uh, Lopez is going to set up away and watch this ball just come back over to the middle of the plate. It's pretty, pretty, pretty magical. That's uh, always working on light. <laughs> it's not easy to make that ball take a take a right on a on a righty. But let's let's talk about a couple of things that are very similar with Roger Clemens because I think the um, important thing to notice when we're watching film isn't the things that everybody does differently because uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff that that guys do differently, but the things that they do the same. Because if I can start to understand uh, what all the best pitchers in the world are doing um, the same. Well, then those things become really, really important to, to imitate and, and to do myself. Um, so right now we, we see the balance point, Jack, nice and yes. tall, just like Roger Clemens. I mean, his, yeah. his toes slightly up like Roger. Yeah. Um, yep. he's got, it's hard to tell from this angle, but you can tell his knee, knee is coming towards his back hip. It's not straight up yep. and down. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, maybe less right coil now. than Roger Clemens, but definitely some coil there. Right. And again, a lot of his, you know, full wind up like this, and this is just part of his timing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's watch him sit into that back leg and click back just one click. It's like he's way, his lead leg is actually stiffer than Roger Clemens. He, he, that was part of his timing. Look at yeah. see it's straight. Roger always had a bend in it. Mm -hmm. And I think right here, this this back leg, I think when we watch guys, whether they're power pitchers or, or, or finesse pitchers, or, or I think Greg could do pretty much whatever he wanted to do. He gets labeled a finesse pitcher, but I mean, there are times in his career when he would rear back and throw hard as well. Yes. Um, yes. So regardless he of- pitched, His first game of the big leagues, he was 20 years old. <laughs> and he pitched a complete game. Probably 150 pitches too, huh? Yeah, quiet, quiet tough boy. Yeah, you get true believer in himself. So I think I think w once we start to notice this, we should be noticing this in our videos as well. As we separate the hands and begin that forward descent towards home plate, that we're able to sit into this back hip without opening up too soon. So let's this this part. I love this view here because I can see his his both butt cheeks, but his, sh his shoulder is still on on target. You can really see, I can see his, the, the lo, almost the whole logo on his shirt, but his belt buckle yep. is starting to turn towards home plate. Oh, man. A couple good ones there, G. Yeah, you can really see. Like, I can still see the logo on his shirt, but his belt buckle is almost completely turned now. Uh, let's get to release point. Look at the elbow to the hip. Mm -hmm. Lead elbow to the hip. Good angle, head still, looking at his target, driving. Who is hitting here? Is that Cecil? It's a big boy hitting. It sure looks like it. <laughs> looks like they're playing the Yankees. Yeah, and this nice loose arm, guys. We've been talking about this lately. See how this arm is loose under here? We call that arm deceleration. Watch the arm come through on the glove side. Really, really loose, kind of like back and forth. Um, okay, so yeah. go ahead, you're saying that, Greg, also, guys that have a loose arm like that and it's easy, it's what uh, it's, it gets sneaky to the hitter because it is so loose and easy. If, if you can uh, bind arm speed with that and you can put it in a spot where you got it, it's, it's a sneaky fastball. Really, really good stuff. Jack, I, I don't know how time went by so fast, uh, but I'm, hope, <laughs> I'm hoping we can uh, do this again soon. Yes, uh, anytime. All right, guys.